Welcome back to another video everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at my haul from the toy show I attended over the weekend. And got quite a few good things there. Uh, not really anything in particular I was looking for, just things that caught my eye and figured I'd snatch up. So we'll go ahead and take a look at what I got here. And I decided to do this video on one of my display tables because I don't feel like cleaning off my workbench at the moment. So yeah, let's take a look. So we'll start off with these three pieces right here, and the reason I'm going to show all three of these at once is because they were all purchased at once. And it was one of those deals, I ran into a guy down there that had a box full of things marked at $2 a piece, or if you got three things, you could get them all for $5. So you basically saved a dollar in the end, and I went ahead and went with that deal, and really there was only one thing I wanted, but anyways, we'll start off with this John Deere articulating tractor and I'm not sure what model this is if anyone knows they can probably leave it in the comments but uh, I don't really care for these tractors because there's just way too much plastic and in there's hardly any die cast really and not not a lot of detail you can see the cabs all blacked out and not a whole lot more to say about it but I believe these were made to be more kid friendly you know somebody's not going to go out and pay twenty thirty dollars on a toy tractor just to have their kid end up destroying it in like 2.5 seconds once they get home. So you could basically pick these up at Tractor Supply and Royal King for I think like five six dollars when they were still available. But like I said I don't really care for this tractor. Uh, I know guys will buy these up just to take the wheels off of them. I'll probably rob the SMV off of this but I don't plan on keeping this for myself. So uh, that's about all there is to look at with that. Next thing I got was this seed box for the Case IH 8500 air drill and unfortunately the drill was not in the box believe me I looked but uh, this is another piece that I don't plan on keeping I mean if anyone out there possibly has the air drill but they don't have the seed box uh, let me know, probably let you have this for a couple bucks, because, uh, I mean, really, I don't have any use for it. And the thing I was really after was this M&W Little Red Wagon, and this was the first thing I picked out of the box, and it's not in too bad a shape. It's a little dusty, and got some minor chipping on it, but, uh, you know, it's all there, nothing's broken off, still has the chute and the door, which uh, doesn't stay open have to put a rock or something in there maybe but uh, I do have some other gravity boxes similar to this which I'll show here in a second but yeah I was mainly after this because I've never seen one of these before and uh, you know, what more to say not really a whole lot but yeah we'll go ahead and look at the other gravity wagons I have in my collection so these are all the gravity boxes that I have in my collection, and I mean there's the M&W Little Red Wagon that I just showed, but I also have this red one which I believe Case IH or International could probably pass as either one, and then I got this orange one here which I believe is supposed to be a Case Wagon, and then over here is this Parker Wagon which I believe this is one of the more rare or harder to find ones. But, uh, yeah, nice to have another uh, gravity box in my collection of gravity wagons. Moving right along, the next piece we'll take a look at is this Top Shelf Replicas, or TSR, Mac F700 cab over. And I purchased this from my friend Jimmy. He was set up down at the show as well. And I paid about $55 for this. And I came out of a private collection, and there was actually another guy looking at this before I was, and needless to say, when I found that out, I did not hesitate to snatch it up when I did. But, uh, unfortunately, this truck has a few faults, uh, starting with the driver's side mirror is unfortunately missing, and on top of that, I think there's supposed to be a bulldog right here, and it's been snapped off, but these trucks are starting to become hard to find and at a reasonable price and I would have preferred one in uh, red or blue but I quite like this orange either way and uh, you can just see the high amount of detail on this truck if we look here 
around the bumper, the grill, all the details just around the cab here. And the cab itself is pretty detailed. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. All the little details in there. Go around to the back here, quite a bit of detail. It's got the Mack Trucks mud flaps. And the cab does tilt forward, but it's kind of a pain in the neck. Oh, there's something else. Uh, bulldogs on the doors there. I saw this at first. I thought that was a scratch in the paint. I almost freaked out. But, uh, yeah, just go ahead and lift the cab up here. It doesn't just tilt forward. It's kind of slotted in there, if you can see. But, yeah, there's a look at the motor for the truck. The other side. And show you the bottom. Get the cab back down here. But show you the bottom here. Just transmission, drive shaft, the axles. And it does have working steering. If I can show that. There we go. You can see the steering does work. And I do have a couple other pieces of uh, all top shelf replica tractor trailers, but. Uh, this is the first cab over that I've got my hands on. Went over to the showcase real quick and grabbed my TSR International 4300 just to do a little comparison of it with the Mac. And this has the stock trailer with it. But, uh, yeah, just do a little comparison here. You can see how the Mac looks. And the only gripe I have with uh, TSR's trucks is like this International is a perfect example. They give the trucks opening hoods, but like right here, this is all the further you can open it because it collides with the bumper. And I kind of don't understand. It's like, why do you give the trucks a detailed engine when you can't even see it? But yeah, these are nice little trucks here. And I do have another one of these uh, cattle trailers that uh, it has white rims instead of black ones, but it's the same thing. Probably go ahead and put that on this cab over Mac for now, but it's currently packed away, so I can't get it out at the moment. But uh, yeah, so that's the Mac F700, and see what happens here. Maybe in the future I can get a mirror for that, but I think as is right now, and you know, $55, that's probably a good deal for something like this because I think they're like 70 some on eBay right now if you can even find them. Like I said, they were a very hot seller when TSR introduced them and they really didn't stick around too long. The next truck we'll take a look at is this DCP Ford LN9000. And just like the Mac I showed earlier, this is a highly detailed little truck. And I got this from my friend Mark at the show paid $40 for it, and I almost got my hands on a white one, but I didn't jump quick enough, and he had it packed by the time I decided I wanted it, so uh, still happy to get my hands on this blue one. You can see there the details around the front going along the side here, and this is like a dark metallic blue. I really like that paint color. Got fuel tanks, uh, quarter fenders, mud flaps. I like the detail they got in the back of the cab here. Nice little touch. Some manufacturers would not bother with that. Going around the other side. Got the exhaust right there. If we go underneath you'll see there's the muffler. Get a detail underneath. Drive shaft. And up top we got the mirrors, the visor, horns, cab lights. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. But you do have quite a detailed interior on these trucks. And one thing I really like with the DCPs is they have the opening hood. And you can see you got a detailed engine in there. And also with the DCP trucks, you got the working steering. Which is another nice touch. And another thing these DCPs have is also working suspension. You can see here, I don't recommend pushing down on those mud flaps. 
but yeah you can see they got the working suspension in there just uh, that little wire running along there is what does that and this is the only uh, Ford 9000 rig that I really have in my collection the other one I have is a dump truck I custom built this years ago back before first gear even came out with these cabs and this is just an Ertl cab that's been modified and put on a DCP frame and dump truck body but uh, so yeah that gives me a tractor now for my collection and I gotta say really like this little truck and uh, thanks to my friend Mark for this and for the good deal as well. Now we're going to take a break from looking at the high priced trucks and look at another piece that I got from Mark and this is a green light 1987 Jeep Wrangler and I basically got this from Mark as a gift I believe it was because my display won for best custom at the show but how I got this was he had three boxes of green light stuff there was trucks trailers Jeeps uh, I think there were some cars in there and he basically told me he's like how are these three boxes you can pick one thing and just give it to you free of charge and I looked through everything a little bit and then I decided on this Jeep and it's not too bad it's a little bit dirty and spare tires missing but overall it's pretty much there the canopy comes off and you can see I've got a bit of detail in there or about as much detail as you can expect from green light but uh, yeah I'm planning on maybe making a custom out of this and Mark suggested making Dixie which would be Daisy Duke's Jeep because pretty much all I'd have to do is a couple alterations put uh, the Dixie decals on the side of the hood here and I believe uh, I believe this had the screaming chicken on the hood as well not 100% sure without going back and referencing photos but yeah in all it's not a bad little Jeep and I actually have another Jeep Wrangler but it's a 2014 model I just bring it in here and this is also a green light but this is the 2014 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon and I got this in the green light hitch and tow series came with this little cargo trailer so uh, yeah like I said not sure what I'll do with this one here as of yet but I'm kind of aiming more towards uh, doing a custom with it well what you're looking at here was an impulse buy but this is a matchbox number 50 B John Deere tractor and these were released in 1964 and part of what led me to purchase this was for the past several months I've been watching the youtuber Marty's matchbox makeovers and he pretty much inspired me to start collecting these older matchbox cars and maybe even do some restorations down the line if I'm confident enough but it was one of those deals that I saw a guy had this as well as uh, some other older matchbox cars and I asked him how much he wanted for it and he said two dollars and at that price I mean how could I pass it up and what surprised me with this is the paint is in remarkable condition considering the age of this tractor and Marty's actually done a restoration on one of these I'll be sure to leave a link to his video in the video description if you want to check that out and also throw in a link to his channel too but we can see here it's quite a detailed little tractor and it's got John Deere on the side of the hood there uh, I think that's Lands it says number 700 right there detail around the engine go around here it's got the silver grill and over on this side more detail around the engine and Marty actually pointed this out in his restoration video right here on the foot plate they got diamond uh, checker plate or I call it diamond T plate but you can see nice little touch right there and it's really nice nothing on this tractor is broken off or missing but the only issue is that the tires no longer stay on they're really loose fitting and it takes literally no effort to take them off I mean I can just roll it along the table here and you're gonna lose a wheel yeah right there see but uh, yeah it was a nice little tractor and 
I don't know what I'm going to do about the wheels other than maybe order some new tires online, reproduction tires, but another thing that led me to purchase this was I do have the trailer that goes with it, the number 51 trailer, and uh, unfortunately it's missing wheels and not in as good of condition, but yeah, you can see, got the, got the complete set now. The only thing that I'm kicking myself about though is the guy had other older Matchbox cars and at $2 a piece I should have snatched up more than just this tractor but one of those deals kind of didn't think about it till the end of the show and it's like ah you know I should have picked up more of those and who knows I probably even could have picked up a few things to send over to Marty but oh well maybe hit a few flea markets this year and find more of these little guys but yeah these are like I said, I really like the older Matchbox cars. Lesney definitely knew what they were doing. And, I mean, stuff like this is way better than anything Mattel's ever going to do again. Well, this is the second to last piece we're going to look at. And it's a first gear Mac B61 tandem axle dump truck. And I got this from my friend Jimmy. Uh, he was the same one I purchased the cab over Mac from. And you can see here I paid $55 for this. And rather than boring you all with the unboxing, I'm just going to save some time and do it this way. So, uh, yeah, uh, just a word of advice. I don't recommend my unboxing method just because it works for me doesn't mean it will work for everyone. But since we got the truck out, now we can see the amount of detail it has. Quite detailed around the front here. Headlights, grill. Uh, push bar on the front there even got the little bulldog on the grill Going along here no opening hood no steering uh, some first gear trucks do have those features though uh, some also have opening doors but not on this I uh, got the release lever for the tailgate detail around the wheels beds really detailed Got good wood detailing along the top there. Go around to the back here. There's the gate. Almost like this gate is not suited to the truck. It's very... Oh, it's just a little stiff there. I mean, you can see that it doesn't... Like, the bed's not really... Hmm, that, that is a little odd there. But anyways, go along this side. We do have the muffler right here going underneath. Yeah, detail there. Got drive shaft and everything. And as for the bed, yes, bed tilts. Got the hydraulics in there. And with the bed up, we can also see the cab lights and the horn detail. And I gotta say, this is a really nice little truck. So, yeah, that's, that's really nice. Uh, like I said, my only complaint would be, put the bed back down here, a little bit at the back there. It's almost like this particular gate wasn't suited for this bed. But I can't remember seeing that on any other first gear trucks. But overall, this is a nice little truck. Uh, give me a second here and I'll see if I got anything to compare it to. Well, the only other one I really have that I think would be a decent comparison is the first gear Mack Granite dump truck. And this is one of the runs Mark Vicker did, I believe. And... Just a comparison of the beds. And for a minute there, I was wondering if maybe they recycled the tailgate off the granite for the B61. But you can see here that they are different. So, like I said, it's just that little bit there. That's the only nagging issue I have. But like I mentioned earlier with... Uh, this truck about not having an opening hood or steering or doors opening the granite trucks got it all the hood opens 
does have working steering and the doors on this truck also open so I don't know it's one of those deals first gear seems to afford that sort of detail to some of their models but not all of them but uh, overall this is a nice little dump truck and I'm going to tell you right now this is going right in the showcase uh, I look forward to using this on my displays in the future but I want to put it in the showcase for now and just display it so the last piece we're going to take a look at is this TSR International RDF 405 and I got this from my friend Mark and didn't pay $80 he actually charged 60 so $20 off thank you Mark and there's information on the back here if you want to pause the video and take a read of that you can but go ahead and get this open here and the box itself is kind of a piece of artwork uh, it's got magnets to hold it closed here. And just open it up like that. And pull out the phone here. There's the truck inside. Just carefully pull this out. I know these are, I think these are resin castings. So they are possibly a little fragile. And there's another piece part right here. Take that out and just go ahead and set the box aside for now but uh, yeah here is the international rdf 405 and i'm not sure the year on this truck definitely an older one back when uh, you know navistar was a thing and i'm not 100 percent sure on the details of this particular truck if this was a special run that tsr did I'd assume possibly a limited edition, but highly detailed. If we look at the front here, we can see headlight, turn signal details around the bumper. It's got the little IH logo on the grill. And going around here, little international right there, air cleaners. Mirrors are a uh, little unusual. Not sure if that's prototypically accurate or not. I'd assume it probably is. TSR usually does good work with that. Uh, detail around the steps. Diamond plate. Uh, not a whole lot going on around the sleeper or back along the frame here. These older trucks, they didn't have a lot of details anyways, I don't think. Uh, fifth wheel looks a lot like DCP. Oh, I think that fifth wheel... I think that fifth wheel actually pivots, maybe? Either that or it's loose. Uh, mud flaps, tail lights. Would have been nice if uh, TSR maybe put. Uh, oh, IH logos on those. That looks like a piece of stainless trim is missing off of here. That might still be floating around in the box, so I have to check. But. Along here, got the muffler right there. Also, another air cleaner, horns and cab lights on the top of the cab. There's a the visor right there. I just got to looking, that's got separately fitted windshield wipers on it, too. That is a really nice little detail right there. And I'd assume the cab interior is also pretty detailed as well, but. Uh, another case with this truck, just like the others, you can't really see. Uh, going underneath, though, not a whole lot of detail there. You can see engine detail up here. It's been casted in. There's the exhaust right here. And detail around the rear axles. And TSR did include, just to get it out of the paper here, did include a drive shaft, which fits up in something like that I believe but you know it was one of those deals they took it out uh, because of the way this fits into the packaging so yeah you can install that if you want but yeah this is a nice little truck and highly detailed and I mean personally I'd say if you have one of these make sure to take good care of it because I could honestly see something like this being uh, uh, worth a few hundred dollars in like what 10 years time if not less uh, definitely a really nice piece and this is another one that's definitely going to go in the showcase and I really don't think I'm going to do too much with this I'm going to try to keep this looking nice 
Uh, probably it'll probably appear in future videos as well. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be really careful with this one. So there's a look at my toy show haul. Definitely got a trend of older trucks going on there. But uh, yeah, I think I got a nice bunch of stuff here. Definitely could have bought more. Kind of wish I would have bought a few things that I was looking at. But this is what I got. And uh, feel free to let me know which one of these you like. And uh, you know, if you enjoy these videos, be sure to comment, like, subscribe, you know, all that stuff everyone says at the end of the video. And, uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one.